This video will highlight some of the key evidence behind patient-centred consultations. Welcome to Consultations for Health, helping you progress in your communication skills to optimise the care of your patients. There are many advantages to developing different aspects of your consultation skills, and through Consultations for Health we've been providing short videos to help you with that process, for example videos on active listening and negotiating a shared agenda. In this video we'll cover some of the key evidence behind why you may want to develop your consultation skills. In the UK, the NHS Constitution makes it clear that all healthcare professionals should support their patients to take responsibility for managing their own health. Healthcare professionals with good communication and consultation skills have been shown to improve patients' adherence to their recommendations, adhere to the treatment they're taking and therefore are more likely to have improved clinical outcomes. However, Healthcare professionals only have a short period of time with each of their patients and it is very easy to focus on your needs over that of your patients. You can get caught up in making sure you ask the questions to data you need or do tests to make sure you make the right clinical decision. However, for the patient it may be more important that you understand what they need from you at that particular moment in time. Patients may therefore leave the consultation dissatisfied and unable to manage their own health care and therefore could lead to negative outcomes. There is a growing body of research, including well-designed randomised controlled trials and systematic reviews, that has explored patient-centred consultations and their effect on the key outcomes of patient satisfaction, adherence to advice and treatments and ultimately clinical outcomes. It's important to note that the majority of this research has been carried out on doctors, particularly general practitioners. However, the key findings from this research can probably equally apply to other healthcare professionals, including nurses and pharmacists. The first key point from the research is from a systematic review regarding medication adherence. This identified that a consultation-based intervention i.e. just sitting down and having a conversation with your patients, can improve medication adherence by 50%. This does not even take into account whether the consultation skills were any good. When we start to look at consultation behaviours, one key aspect comes forward, and that is how involved the patient was in the consultation. Research shows that patients who are actively involved, i.e. a more patient-centred consultation, is more likely to lead to better health outcomes. However, the practitioner has an important role to play in either improving the patient participation, they could also have a negative effect by meaning patients aren't involved and lead to more negative health outcomes. If you're going to increase patient participation within a consultation, the key place to do that is towards the start, where you would need to identify their agenda or needs. Studies that have investigated whether patients' agendas were voiced within a consultation have found that the majority of time they are not. This leaves patients with unresolved issues and can lead to poor outcomes. While several studies have identified the benefits of improving particular aspects of consultations, references for these studies can be found in the information below, what we know that when you look at current consultations, there still remains a number of deficits or problems in the behaviours that are occurring. The key points were only half of patient concerns are usually identified. Little information is obtained about the patient's perceptions of their physical, emotional or social problems. Information is provided in a rigid way and tends to ignore the individual patient's desires for information at that time. Very little attention is given to checking how well patients have understood information that's been given to them. 
psychological problems that patients are experiencing are often not recognised by the practitioner. About half of all medication is taken as intended, therefore patients aren't adhering to the advice they have been given. From this brief summary of some of the key research into consultation skills, we can see that it is important to increase patient participation and therefore have a more patient-centred consultation. To do this, the start of the consultation, negotiating that shared agenda, identifying those patient concerns and then listening actively to what they are telling you are going to be fundamental skills to develop as you go on your pathway to improving your consultation skills. It is clear from the research that often the patient's psychological and social needs are ignored or not explored within a healthcare consultation. Therefore, taking a more holistic approach is going to be important if you're going to truly address the patient's concerns. For most practitioners, time is always going to be a challenge and it can be very scary to ask patients openly what their needs or concerns are. However, Unless you identify them early on, you can then start to work to address them. It may mean that you cannot address all of them in one particular consultation, but you negotiate with the patient which ones you can address at that particular time and arrange sensible follow-up to address the rest. Developing these skills and managing your consultation in a timely and structured way can be supported by the range of videos available through Consultations for Health. Thank you for watching Consultations for Health. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, like our Facebook page and subscribe to these videos. Mm -hmm.